All right, everybody. I hope everybody is doing well and ready for more defining of self. Uh, this is a look at someone who was in therapy for, I don't know if you caught it as you read the textbook, 22 years. I was like, oh, you have got to be kidding me. Uh, so I guess you'd have to say Bowenian therapy is definitely not... Uh, not not short term. <laughs> it's like, wow, that's just crazy to me. Um, I also struggle with the, the sense of, I really, I'm just convinced that without the Lord, and as Christians, we have so much advantage, and I believe Christian counseling is so incredibly turbocharged in terms of change and deep change. Um, when I think about the things that are passed down for, through our family, uh, the negative things. I, I think about unforgiveness. I just think it's, I, you know, there you go, one word. It's that simple. I know it's not that simple, but uh, I think we need to ask the Lord to forgive us for judgments and uh, for harboring bitterness and resentment, sometimes hatred and rage and anger at family members and not even aware of it. Uh, and I think as we, then we go into this uh, next phase of saying, okay, Lord, I received that forgiveness, and now I want you to empower me to, as we receive his forgiveness, we pass that forgiveness on to our family members that have hurt us, and that is what breaks the chain. That doesn't mean that we, we sit down and have a prayer, one prayer time doing that, and we're done. That's not a, what I mean at all. I still believe it is a long-term process, and I don't believe it, that it, it is very rare for, it's just poof, gone, never attempted again. You know, my dad raged, and and I rage, and now I've prayed that prayer, and I'll never rage again. No, I don't. I think that's unrealistic. And I think for most of you, you're like, yeah. I mean, you you've been around enough and seen enough to where, yeah, that's unrealistic. So there there is a balance between um, this hopeless, you know, 22 years, and we can barely set a boundary with somebody, versus um, uh, versus expecting some kind of an instant instantaneous, the Lord's going to pull out his magic wand and woof, and we're like, yay, okay, fairy dust, and I'm all better. Uh, because we have to relearn. We've learned uh, those patterns. We've, it's so incredibly complex in terms of the roles we play in families and the interactions we have with people. And, you know, this is how I respond. We wouldn't say that consciously, right? But, you know, given the right set of circumstances to stay with my rage example, this is what we do. When it comes to this, we rage. That's what we do. But there you go, bam, automatic, right? So, um, yes, there's healing. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that helps. But but we we really have to relearn and and uh, work on things. Um, I really believe for a lifetime. I think we can have some significant chunks of of progress along the way. So in order to to stay with it in order to stay with our healing process um it it take, does take a lot of work and we do have to have, be motivated and, and disciplined and stay with it now i think the reality too is that and i don't think the textbook talks about this if so i missed it is there are seasons in life and especially as christians the lord's going to take us through seasons where like okay like the, as if the lord was saying brad i want you to work on this right now in your life like oh yes sir okay uh so we as we go through seasons, yes, we're going to have a, a heightened amount of intensity of working on things. Um, <clears throat> now, we can we can stay growing, uh, reading good books, reading the Bible, uh, devotions, prayer, all of our spiritual disciplines, uh, being involved in church, ministry, communion, fellowship, uh, all those things. And we can do that always. But there are going to be times of less hard work and greater Hard work on our emotional health. Um, and I really, I'm enjoying y'all's uh, uh, discussion board post um, and your papers. And I, I really believe that you guys are, are applying these concepts to your family. And that's beautiful and fun for me to see. Um, it, it, this reciprocal uh, process is, is so incredibly complex. I write, I write a sentence and I look at it and go, that doesn't that doesn't touch the intensity of this this system of all these parts uh, reciprocally uh, impacting one another, um, but nonetheless it does. Um, so while uh, one member of the system may be subconsciously uh, or maybe just out of pure meanness, it's possible 
uh, they're undermining the ability of the of the family to function or the ability of one individual. Um, but sometimes that process, uh, the under functioning person or the one undermining, it, it's it's like it, it. We talk about in counseling, we talk about homeostasis, and that's not a good thing, right? Not homeostasis, like oh, that's a good thing. No, we're talking about this this sick system of um, of uh, backbiting and and stabbing and uh, under functioning and over functioning and undermining it it kind of works for the family um it's just familiar to them it's what they know everybody kind of has their role some of you in your writing and your discussion boards and i hope you're reading each other's discussion boards too have really laid this out you're like wow i'm starting to get healthy and i'm starting to set boundaries and my family is flipping out i'm like yeah that's right because you are upsetting the apple cart you are you are changing the homeostasis of your family uh, in hopes to bring it to <laughs> a level of healthy. Okay, I've been dying to do this all semester. Well, you are. Hi, baby. Come here. Hey, come here. Come here, sweetie. Look. Oh, you dog. Come here, baby. Oh, there you go. Okay, you can see my dog, sorta, maybe. Um. Okay. <laughs> I've, I, yeah, there's two of them actually. They're they're twins, but um, I am. Uh, Good grief, I'm not sure what that was. Hold on a second, I'm gonna check on that. Okay, sorry about that little interruption there. Hopefully that was halfway fun for some of you, my beautiful Doberman Pinscher. Uh, I, I, I'd like to have them both like sit here and then show you both of them together, but whatever. Okay, so um, while while this, this process and this kind of sick system working, working but not really working, right? Uh, it it is oftentimes it's beneficial to one or more of the members and and destructive to others. And again, most of the time people are not conscious of this. Oftentimes it is it is a, a person with the most how would I say it social power or power in the family that ends up being the be most benefited and the one that is more and they're also more of an aggressive personality and the one that is more of a passive personality is the one that that it's costly for and then also we have that person be becoming a, a symptom bearer of the sickness of the entire system so um I, I hopefully i'll picked up on this and one of the things that i did with with uh, this is just literally went through the the uh, case study that they gave us of the lady being in counseling for 22 years whoo, uh, and looked at, uh, just pulled out some of the concepts, right, which is kind of what I've been doing all along. Sorry, I feel redundant, but anyway. So uh, how vulnerable are we to getting sucked in uh, to other people's emotional junk is bullet number one. Uh, if your differentiation level is low, then you're extremely vulnerable. If it's the higher it is, the less vulnerable you are. And I hope you understand the concept of emotional pressure by now. And emotional pressure uh, are can be in multiple forms. Usually, it's anxiety driven. Um, according to Bowen, but really, I, I think that's probably right on. Um, <clears throat> and you're looking at you know, don't upset mom, don't upset dad, or uh, yeah, bring it on, take them, take them on, right? So it, it, but it's emotional pressure, right? It's, it's this emotional intensity that happens um, in families, from at least it, not all families. Some of you are like, yeah, we were all just quiet and everybody ever said anything and nothing, nobody ever yelled, nobody ever argued. Well, okay, so there's, there's extreme pressure um, to go that route. And, and that is a form of emotional pressure. Um, so how aware are we of it? Um, two against one, that's a biggie, uh, or, or two or more against one. Uh, that's a, 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 there, for a long time, I've talked in counseling about, uh, you know, I have, I feel this me against you dynamic in your family, or there is this, uh, uh, two against one dynamic or three against one dynamic, right? So, so people will gang up on uh, each other, <clears throat> which obviously is problematic and not working really for them. Um, 
what is your own um, emotional compass if you're grounded in um, who you are in Christ and get solid differentiation from a uh, or defining a oneself from a Christian perspective, then you're there's your compass, right? That is your emotional compass. Are you able to stay the course in the midst of all this turmoil and emotional pressure in the family is the question we're asking here. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so I'm going to pull some things out as, as we go through this case, this case study. Um, I don't know if you noticed, and, and, and there would be things that you would notice if you were actually putting together this PowerPoint. You would notice things that I didn't notice and vice versa. So it's not a big deal. I mean, there's so many things to notice in here. But it really stood out to me when she said an incredible need for the other is the reason they got marriage, ma got married. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's... Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's the, there can be a, you could say that and there'd be a healthy balance with it. But in this, there was this um, enmeshment, uh, this inability to exist alone. Uh, I, I, I don't know if I've done this before with you or not, but as I was, as I was, as I was looking at this um, section where it was talked a lot about her marriage and the, the back and forth and her getting sucked into his alcoholism and her, enabling him and getting sucked in emotionally and sucked in emotionally with her family. Um, <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes balances are hard to, to uh, accurately communicate. And certainly I, I don't want uh, you to, <laughs> I'm going to use an example out of my wife's and I's relationship and I'm pretty sure I've used it before, but um, I'll, so I'll go, I'll go through it quickly. This is not to brag. I'm just saying there, there, when you go to a party with your spouse, it's a good, measuring stick. It's not the only measuring stick, but it's a good measuring stick for your level of uh, confidence in yourself, your level of differentiation, or how well you have defined yourself. Those are three ways of saying the same thing, basically. So we go to a party. We walk in hand in hand. We stand at the door, talk to people for a minute, set down our food or our host gift or hostess gift or whatever, and we are gone. I mean, we're poof. You know, we may or may not bump into each other during the party, stand next to each other, chit chat in the same conversation. We'll do that some sometimes and sometimes maybe not the whole night or hardly the whole night. I mean, we'll find each other and touch base or look across the room and wink and grin. But I don't I neither one of us feels like I have I just can't function if I'm not with her. That's what we're talking about when we talk when in this 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 overwhelming intense need for each other or emotional uh, uh, enmeshment. Um, we we love each other. We're there for each other. We know we're, we know we're good. We're fine. Now let's go have fun. Let's talk to other people um, and then come back together. You may remember in your dating years you may have been that way where you're just you know clingy and drove your friends crazy. But certainly if you weren't you 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 knew people who were that way. And it's like, dude, really? I mean, it's so refreshing to me when you see young uh, uh, people getting together, young adults getting together, teenagers even can be, and there's a couple, but it's just not a problem, right? They're, they're fine. They're off talking to other people and they're not like worried or jealous or freaking out. It's like, oh, that's wonderful. Uh, and that's because of a, of a relatively healthy level of differentiation. When the couple is just completely abandons all their friends and and they're no they're they're not it's just each other that is that is a sign of <clears throat> of a low level of differentiation um i also threw in there that this really sets the stage for her to be controlled by him which which the it, i don't think it ever said those words but in many ways, she was controlled by others. She allowed it, but she was very much controlled by others. Uh, they didn't have outside friendships, uh, not much. Um, she was an approval seeker. Uh, boy, that's a big approval seekers, by the way, and, and spouses of alcoholics. That is, thou, boy, we can just match those two right there. Boom, boom. Those are one and the same. And then again, you have um, people pleaser, another phrase, and this similar and what you have is uh, this codependency. She needs him to need her is the definition of codependency. I need you to need me. 
and uh, then enabling behavior, enabling him to continue to drink. So covering for him when he's too, too drunk in the morning, too hungover to go to work, uh, those kinds of things. Probably in that situation would be an example of, of that. Um, the projection process, uh, again, laid out here. Um, <clears throat> and, and where this was drawn from was her and her parents, where she, they both play a role in this transmission of this, this unhealthy differentiation of self in this process is not a something that is done to the child, and especially when you're talking about an adult child, maybe as a young child, sure. Uh, but it is a it is a it is a game we willingly play together. Uh, I really like that, by the way, that phrase uh, for that last bullet. Um, and it's important because if you're going to change something, you have to take responsibility. Well, my parents did. My parents and my parents. Whoa, 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 time out. What role did you play in it? Uh, oh, a very active role. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I danced to the dance. I didn't stand there and and uh, I didn't stand there and. Uh, set a boundary and say, no, I'm not going to play the game. I dance the dance, right? So uh, boundaries book. If someone's trying to control you, it shows you that they have a problem. There's an unhealthiness within them. If you allow them to control you, then you have a problem. And you're, and you're dancing the dance, right? And then you're all mad because they controlled you. And it's like, whoa, time out. You just look them dead in the face and say, yeah, that's control and manipulation, and I'm not playing. And turn around and walk off. And they, I mean, they may have a nuclear meltdown right then and there. Uh, and many times they will. They're like, okay, call me when it's over. Talk to you later. I'm dead serious. You're like, well, it's so cold. No, that's what it takes. Um, that is exactly what it takes a lot of times. Um, do you erase yourself? That's a very interesting word. Erase yourself in order to accommodate the other. And this goes right along with the people pleasing and all the stuff that we've already said. Um, what do you do when conflict shows up? Do you, do you become a warrior? Do you fight? Uh, do you yield to avoid uh, the pain or, and the conflict, the anxiety? Um, I think she did in this Dr. A. I think would, we'd say Dr. A probably did, and, and most of the time at least. Um, do you, I, I just read today in someone's post, uh, discussion board post, I decided to become what God and I want me to become instead of what my family want me to become or expected me to become. I'm like, yes, yes. I mean, that's just, yeah, I mean, that is awesome. Extremely exciting. And so the whoever that was that wrote that right now, you should be smiling really big going, yeah, that's me, that's me, yeah, good, yeah, cool, good stuff, very good stuff, it's exciting, painful and hard and difficult and beautiful and growing and all that good stuff all at once. Um, how how the, the, the lower our differentiation level, the, the less we're able to uh, distinguish between our feelings and and what is reality and fact? And if you listen to people, you really got to learn to listen to people, especially if you're going to be a counselor. You got to listen to people argue. And it's like, they'll go so far off of the facts. You're like, that's, an, that's just an emotional response. That's not, there's nothing to do with the issue. Like, wow, um, has to do with your hurt and your past and all kinds of stuff and all kinds of junk between the two of you, maybe over the long term. But there's, there's no fact anymore. Right, so we get lost in that when feeling uh, shows up, and we and part of differentiation is being able to distinguish between the two. Uh, how good are we at setting boundaries? We talked about this. Uh, the great example in the in the uh, book where the landlady kept calling uh, Dr. A had already moved out. The landlady kept calling Dr. A and saying uh, that your husband didn't pay the rent. And I'm sure for a while it was like, oh, I don't think the book says specifically, but oh, okay, okay, I'll pay it, I'll pay it, I'll pay it, I'll help with it. She's like, hey, okay, not my problem. Talk to him. He's living there. I'm not. I'm not living there anymore. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, but he might get kicked out and become homeless. Well, he's being an alcoholic right now. Maybe that would force him to go to treatment. Um, that that's yeah, that might happen. Sorry. Um, I know that sounds so cold, and I, I, I mean, I. <clears throat> anyway, I wish we could talk face to face, but there you go. Okay, so I hope. Um, that this has caused you to think, and um, uh, by now, at, the, at this point in the stage of the of the 
process of this class, you're not learning new, 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 there's new terms, Whew. there's hardly any new terms uh, at, at this point that you're going to learn, and that's not the point. It, it is, I'm asking you to ask the Lord to help you dig deeper, have better understanding as to your own um, emotional junk. Yes, we all have emotional, I hope nobody's, I don't have emotional junk. Oh, I would hope, hopefully you would not say that out loud in front of me anyway. <laughs> All right, guys, God bless. Hope things go well for you, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.